phage therapy has rescued a very sick patient, which is what we'll be talking about on Microbial Minutes. This is ASM's update on what's hot in the microbial sciences. Today's edition is The Enemy of My Enemy is My Friend. I'm Julie Wolf, and we will be discussing a paper that was published recently in Nature Medicine. This paper shows that a modified bacteriophage has successfully been used to fight infection in a very sick patient. The patient was a 15-year-old with cystic fibrosis, a condition that leads to the accumulation of mucus in the lungs. This can both block lung function and can also lead to bacterial infection, uh, as bacteria can feed on some of the, the, the mucus substrates. This particular patient had been fighting chronic infections for many years, as many cystic fibrosis patients do. She had been suffering from a mycobacterium abscessus infection for eight years. Uh, but due to the lung deterioration, the lung function deterioration, she required a transplant. And in the course of getting her transplant, she received uh, immunosuppressive drugs. And this tipped the balance of that chronic infection in favor of the bacteria and allowed it to become a disseminated infection throughout her body. This was very serious because it was a multidrug resistant strain, which in this report they call GD01. And this GD01 uh, was not responding to the conventional antibiotics which were used to treat um, the infection. So the strain was taken and used to screen against a library of bacteriophage. Bacteriophage are viruses that specifically infect bacteria and, in fact, often are specific for a particular bacterial species. This was screened against a library that had been generated through the C-phages program, which is an educational program in which students discover and describe bacteriophages from the environment. Uh, and mycobacterial species are often part of the soil uh, microbiome, and thus there were potential hits. The strains, um, the, ba the bacteriophage, which they found, and, and there were three, which we'll be talking about, are shown on the right-hand side here. They had uh, genomically distinct lineages, so they are not related, uh, and they are named by the students who discover them. So the first one which was discovered is called Muddy, uh, which was found very quickly to efficiently infect and kill uh, the GD01 isolate by lysing the cells. So uh, the bacteriophage will make so many progeny that the, the cells will eventually burst open. Uh, the two other uh, bacteria J and BPS, uh, these were not very efficient at killing the cells. They were very good at infecting the GD01 isolate, but they didn't kill it very efficiently. Uh, and so to make them more uh, better killers of this strain, uh, both of these bacteriophage had a repressor gene removed from their bacteriophage genome. This um, made them much more efficient at infecting and killing the GD01 strain. Additionally, the BPS um, was underwent selection for mutations that allowed it to more efficiently infect the Mycobacterium abscessus instead of the Mycobacterium smegmatis in which it had first been identified. And those host range mutants uh, were I identified as having SNPs in a particular gene called the portal gene 3, and these are referred to as HRM1 and HRM10. Uh, in the next slide, we'll see how they were used, not as single bacteriophage, but in a three-phage cocktail, which is reminiscent of the way that HIV is fought with a three-drug cocktail. The idea behind using three drugs or bacteriophage is that the probability of an isolate developing the enough mutations to resist all three of those different um, therapies is very low, so much less likely to develop resistance against the bacteriophage. And you can see that in the right-hand side where they tested the efficacy of the bacteriophage in singular or together. So both Zoe uh, J and the BPS, the modified versions, at high concentrations of bacteria were not able to kill every single bacterial cell. And this leads to the possibility that resistance would develop within the infection. However, when all three of the phages were used as a cocktail, uh, even at the highest concentration of bacterial cells, there were no surviving bacteria that were detected. So the, the phage cocktail was then tested on a sternal wound, a skin wound of the patient, to see whether it could potentially be effective. And quite quickly, the wound started to uh, become smaller, indicating that the bacterial cells were were dying because of the treatment. And from there, they um, started intravenous 
therapy, uh, giving this every 12 hours to the patient um, for 32 weeks, uh, you, and in, still, in fact, is still ongoing. Um, but the patient was discharged after nine days because the um, therapy was so effective that, as you can see in the lower right-hand side, uh, the the detection of the um, bacterial um, the bacterial infection within a cross-section PET scan decreased quite um, quite a bit. And this is shown six weeks after treatment, but she was discharged to receive therapy at home uh, after only nine days. Within her sputum, they are no longer able to um, culture. I, um, uh, Megobacterium abscessus, but because there could be some resistor or persister cells um, still present within her body, this is, why she, this is why she is continuing to receive therapy. And in fact, researchers are looking for a fourth phage um, to add to that cocktail just to ensure that no resistance develops. Uh, and researchers um, have mentioned, and we have talked about on a previous Microbial Minutes, that there could be some sort of interaction with the host immune system and these different phage, uh, because phage are recognized differently than bacteria are, and our immune system could either be swayed to have an incorrect response or could undergo some sort of large inflammatory, potentially damaging response. Uh, fortunately, that was not observed. There were some weak antibody responses and weak cytokine responses that were seen. Um, uh, however, none of those were neutralizing antibodies that would disable the phage from infecting those bacteria, which is very important. Now, this was picked up in a number of different outlets. You may have seen it in many different mainstream outlets. Uh, and one of the, the positive heartwarming parts of this story is that the people are really um, the face of the story. So the patient uh, has identified herself and is really becoming an advocate, uh, she and her mother, for this phage therapy. And I like this, this particular image from Science um, that covered the news because it highlights all of the people involved. The physician scientist who is treating uh, the patient, that's Helen Spencer on the left-hand side, Graham Hatful, um, uh, who is a scientist who runs the Sea phages program and helped to identify those phages. And then the patient herself, Isabel Carnell Holdaway, and her mother, Joanne, um, who, as I mentioned, have identified themselves, so there isn't any type of uh, patient identification issues here. Now, Helen Spencer talked about how serious this type of infection is uh, in that Science News article. She said, my heart sinks when I see that a lung transplant patient has got a wound infection because I know what the trajectory is going to be. It's a torturous course that has ended in death for all those children. And this is a good point to mention that this phage cocktail is not going to be something that can be given to all people who have mycobacterium abscessus or other non-tuberculosis uh, mycobacterial infections because of the specificity of the interaction between bacteriophage and bacteria. Uh, unfortunately, another patient had a second isolate called GDO2, which was undergoing the same search for a bacteriophage um, that could be used as a therapeutic. And although one was identified, it was found too late and the patient succumbed to her infection uh, and died. Uh, however, hopefully as the bacteriophage libraries grow and are better characterized, perhaps identifying those phages will become a little simpler and be able to be done more quickly in the future. However, um, this particular patient, Isabel, is doing quite well. She's resumed um, uh, uh, driving lessons and all the normal, um, you know, lifestyles of a 17-year-old. Uh, she's even well enough to express a little bit of disgust at the discovery of one of those bacteriophage, muddy, which in a rotting eggplant. So this is the first use of phages to fight a mycobacterial infection. And this is the first time that any bacteriophages have been modified in a particular way. These don't count as genetically modified organisms uh, in the UK where these studies were done because there's no genes that have been added to the organisms, but because they had specific um, genes that were taken out of the genomes, they can be considered engineered bacteriophages and they have been shown to be very effective in this particular patient case uh, to treat this one particular isolate. Hopefully this bodes well for using bacteriophages in the future. If you want to get more updates on the latest in uh, bacteriophage as therapeutics, go ahead and subscribe so you never miss one of our Microbial Minutes updates. I'd like to thank you for listening and thank Ray Ortega for production. I'm Julie Wolf, and I'll be with you next time on Microbial Minutes.